Here are the specific charges. Count one, conspiracy to defraud the United States. Count two, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. Count three, conspiracy or attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. And count four, conspiracy against rights. Okay, now here's how they're saying Trump broke the law. They're saying Trump lied that the election was fraudulent when he really knew the election was clean and that these lies made it hard for the government to certify the election. Now, first, they said Trump called a bunch of state legislators in Georgia, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, and tried to get them to investigate election fraud, hold hearings. Then they're saying Trump broke the law when he asked Pence to do the right thing, to not certify and kick it back to the states. That was a different legal interpretation than many people had at the time, but it was a difference of opinion. And it didn't matter because Pence didn't do it. And then they're saying the January 6th protesters, because of Trump's lies, slowed down the certification for a couple hours. That's it. Those are the charges. He can have four trials next year. And we also may be looking at a President Biden impeachment trial next year as well. So, legally speaking, Trump's going to have to pay lawyers a lot of money. And if he's convicted, he will not go to prison. He'll be freed on appeal. And he'll be able to appeal these federal charges all the way to the Supreme Court, which will take a while, probably until after the election. And there's no way the Supreme Court of the United States is going to uphold a conviction of a former president close to 80 years old. That's not how the court operates, especially on something as political as this.